In this video, I'm going over how to use the Alcatel JoyTab 2 for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. And the video today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to use the JoyTab 2 for beginners. We're gonna do a basic walkthrough of the button layout, how to navigate the screen, how to download applications, how to get your email on there. And after this video, you should feel a lot more confident in using this device. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with, again, our button navigation walkthrough. So on the left side of the tablet, you'll find, guess what? No buttons, zero. On the right side, you'll find a power button and then a volume up and a volume down. And then at the top of the tablet, you'll find an auxiliary port to plug in headphones. And here you'll find your type C charging port. This is where you'll plug in the power adapter. If you ever need to replace the charger, no problem. Just make sure you ask for a type C charging type. That's the type it uses. Okay, and sorry, it's a hair blurry on this section here. Okay, so those are the exterior buttons here. Now, I'm gonna press that power button here to put the tablet to sleep. And if I wanna wake it up, I'm just gonna press the button again, and that will wake up the tablet. Understand when the tablet goes dark, it's not off, it's just asleep. But if you'd like to turn it off, you'll need to hold down this power button for a few seconds to prompt the menu. It'll bring up these three buttons here, then you'll tap on this power button to turn it off completely. Once it's off completely, you simply hold down this power button for a few seconds and then the tablet will turn back on, okay? So I'm gonna tap the button to wake up the tablet because it's asleep. And then to get into the tablet, take your finger, put it on the screen and you're gonna swipe up. Keep your finger on the screen when you swipe up. So on the screen, and swipe up or think of it like dragging your finger up the screen and that will unlock the tablet. So that's our walkthrough of the exterior. Now that we're in the tablet, let's talk about how to navigate. How do we get around? So at the bottom of the screen, you'll find three buttons here. Your back button, home button, and your recent apps button. Let's start with the home button. So this is one of the most important buttons on the tablet. Uh, no matter what you're doing, the, the home button takes you back to this screen, which is called the home screen. So for example, if I were to go to this icon, which is the uh, web browser, uh, also known as the Google Chrome app, if I wanna go on the internet to do a search, I would tap on this icon here. It would take me into Google Chrome, and then I could uh, tap in the search box up here, and let's say I wanted to you know, shop for shoes. I could just type in shoes. Hit that button. I did my Google search for shoes. Let's say I'm all done searching for shoes. I'm gonna tap this home button right here to get back to the main screen, just like that. So no matter what you're doing, tapping this button takes you back to the home screen. That's it, okay. Now, there's also a command if you hold down on this button, it will launch what's called your Google Assistant. So if I, instead of tapping the button, if I keep my finger on it, it'll launch the Google Assistant and it'll begin to listen and you could give it a command. You can have it search something for you without you having to type it in. So again, that's just holding down on the circle. On the left side here, you have what's called the back button. And the back button just allows you to navigate by taking you back one step. So for example, if I tap on the settings uh, icon here, it'll take me to the settings menu. And then let's say I were to go to battery. So I'm on this screen right now. If I wanna go back one screen, I would simply tap on the back button. And guess what? It took me back one screen. Now, if I hit the back button again, guess what, it's gonna take me out of the settings because there's nowhere else to go. So if I tap it again, guess what? We're out of settings and back to our home screen. So think of this as just a way to navigate back one step. Now lastly, you have what is called the recent apps button. Now the recent apps button is a way to look at all of the current apps that are running on the tablet. And let me take one step back before I move on. So the word apps. 
These little icons, these are known as apps. Apps is an abbreviation for applications. Think of it like a computer. Computers have programs, tablets and smartphones have apps or applications. So if you hear me use the word apps, I'm just referring to these little icons on the screen, which are other little programs for the tablet. Okay, so let's get back to our button here. So recent apps shows you all of the apps that are running on the tablet at the current time. So if I tap on it, I can actually scroll through and see what apps are currently open or what apps I've used uh, previously. So for example, I just opened the settings, so there's the settings. And I just opened the, the web browser, Google Chrome, and so that's also open as well. So one important thing to note, whenever you open one of these little icons here, let's say I were to open the Messages app, right? If I hit the home button, it just takes me back to the home screen, but that application or app is still running in the background. So I can just tap recent apps to go back to it later if I wanna continue doing whatever it is I was doing. Or you might say, I'm finished using this, I wanna close it. If you wanna close this so it's not running anymore, you just swipe up. And you keep swiping up to close all of these applications that are running in the background. This is a really easy way to keep your tablet running fast. You want to make sure you don't have a lot of apps running in the background. When you finish using something, hit recent apps and just swipe up to close it. So next, let's go over what is called the notification panel. If you take your finger and bring it to the top of the screen where the camera is, the little icon, the little camera right here and you swipe down or drag your finger down the screen it'll take you to what is called the notification panel this is where you'll get alerts uh, about uh, new emails new messages uh, or other uh, notifications from your application so right now i have two emails right here from one from fitbit one from google so i know i have new emails to check and I can simply tap on this notification right here and it will take me right into the Gmail app so I can begin to check those emails. So this is just the section where you can see if you have any new messages that have come through on your tablet. Also at the top of the screen you have what are called your switches. Now these switches control uh, different settings on the tablet. So for example, if you'd like to connect to your home Wi-Fi, you'd need to make sure this switch is turned on, which is your Wi-Fi switch. Now, because it's lit up in green, that's how we know our Wi-Fi is turned on and we're able to connect to a network. If I were to tap on the, I the icon, and guess what, it's not green anymore, that means that I've turned off the Wi-Fi signal and now I cannot connect to a network. So, if you wanna connect to Wi-Fi, make sure you uh, first turn this on and then you can hold down on the icon and it will take us to our Wi-Fi menu where now I can connect to a Wi-Fi network. Now this is very useful. Some of you guys will do this when you bring the tablet home for the first time, you'll connect to your home Wi-Fi, but guess what? If you take it to a friend's house, take it to a coffee shop, you'll need to be able to follow these same steps so you can connect to their local Wi-Fi. So just to show you once again, swipe down from the top Make sure Wi-Fi icon is lit up and hold down, just put your finger on the icon for one second. It'll take you to the Wi-Fi section of the settings and then it'll allow you to see all the Wi-Fi networks that are available and you simply tap on the one you wanna to connect to. If I wanted to connect to Pershing 12, I would just tap on it. It's now gonna ask me to enter a password and the keyboard is gonna pop up. I would type in the password hit the blue dot or the blue check in the corner, and guess what? It'll begin trying to connect to that network. So that's how you connect to Wi-Fi. Now, right next to it, you have your Bluetooth icon. So if you have Bluetooth speakers, Bluetooth headphones, or another Bluetooth device that you'd like to connect to, obviously first, we need to tap it to turn it on, make sure it's lit up. And again, hold down on the icon. It'll now take us to our Bluetooth menu, and guess what? I would tap pair new device and it'll begin to look for Bluetooth devices that I can connect to. So that's how you would connect to a Bluetooth speaker or Bluetooth headphones. Now in this section, you'll find a few different options here. 
do not disturb, rotation, your battery saver mode if you want to keep your battery lasting a bit longer, your data icon if you have yours connected to mobile data. Now you can also swipe down again to get to an, a larger menu of switches. So swipe down and now you'll notice we have a few extra options here. Airplane mode, eye comfort, auto brightness and I can swipe to the left and I have another option which is to cast the screen. If you wanted to play your tablet on a, a, a TV, you can hit cast and if your TV has casting capabilities or if you have a Google Chromecast, you would be able to cast it to your Chromecast, whatever TV has the Chromecast. So those are just a few things you need to know about navigating this uh, menu up here. The last thing I wanna show you is how do you find all the applications on the tablet? You see a couple here, and if I, yep, so there's just a couple of uh, icons here, a couple of apps, but there's more apps on the tablet that you can't see right now. To get to the list of all of the applications that are on the tablet, you're gonna swipe up on the home screen. And now we're in what is called the app drawer. And as I go up, you can see these are all of the apps that are currently on the tablet. And as you download more, they'll all show up in this section, okay? Now, one more thing, we're on the home screen. If we swipe to the right, it will take us to our Google search. This is just a, or it's actually called Google now, I believe. It's a page where it'll show you uh, different Google news. And you can also uh, tap in the box here to do a quick Google search as well. So that's another option you have on the tablet. Okay, so we're officially done with navigating the tablet, how to move around. Now next we're gonna talk about how do we download applications. So maybe there's specific apps or games you want to be on the tablet. How do I do that? Well, we're gonna tap on the Play Store icon. And the Play Store is where you download or where you find and download applications for the tablet. Now one disclaimer, if you tapped on the Play Store icon and it didn't take you here, it means you need to sign into a Gmail account before you can proceed. You have to have a Gmail or Google account to sign into before the tablet will allow you to download anything. So if you're on a screen that is asking you to sign to a Google account, either enter your Google account information or at the bottom of the screen, you should see an option that says create an account. You can tap there, create a Gmail. And once you finish that process, it will allow you to then get to this Play Store where we can look for apps and games. Okay, so let's talk about how to download apps. It's super easy. At the top of the screen, you'll find a search box. All we do is just tap in this box and we just type in an app that we want to download. Maybe you want to have the Spectrum app so you can watch your Spectrum TV from your tablet. Yup, you'll just type in Spectrum. Now there's a shortcut to this, which is instead of typing it in, you can always tap on the microphone in the corner and just say the name and it will search it automatically by your voice. Spectrum. So it's gonna search for you and guess what? It found the Spectrum TV app and I can tap on this green button here to now download and install that application onto the tablet. And you can track the progress in the left corner here. You'll see that little green circle spinning and when it's all done, this button will change from cancel to open. And that's how you'll know the app was successfully downloaded to the tablet. Now, while that's downloading, I wanna show you a few other things and we'll come back and check on the progress in a minute. Now, guess what? This is a perfect opportunity for us to use our back button because we wanna go back to the main screen of the Play Store. So tap on the back button and look, now we're back to our home screen of the Play Store. So I can also just swipe through the list here and they're gonna recommend um, popular applications that other people are downloading. And so you might find something else you like just by scrolling through this list. You'll also notice at the top of the screen here, you have some uh, categories, top charts, kids, 
events, new, premium. These are all different categories of apps and games that you can go through to see what other apps are available for the tablet. Now, we're in the game section right now of the Play Store. You can also tap on apps. And these will be not games, but just specific applications. So for example, uh, Prime Video, if you'd like to watch uh, Amazon Prime Videos on your tablet, you would tap on that icon, tap the green install button, and it'll begin to download that app as well and I can continue to scroll through. So sometimes you know what you wanna download and sometimes you just wanna see what's available and the best way is to just scroll through and see all the different options that are available, okay? You can also download books by tapping on here, this button here for the book section and see what books are available. I'm gonna now tap my home button to get out of the Play Store and I'm gonna swipe up because I wanna see if my new app's downloaded and so we, we downloaded the Spectrum TV app, and look, there it is, Spectrum TV. And we also downloaded uh, a game as well, and so we're just waiting for that uh, app to download, so that one is still going. You can also swipe down from the top of the screen, and uh, sometimes if something is still downloading, you'll see a progress bar at the bottom here that'll show you that something is downloading. So we'll give it a few minutes. Oh, actually it's done. There's our Prime Video app. And guess what, if I wanna to go to Prime Video, I simply tap on the icon from here, and then I can begin using that app. Okay, so that is the process to download an app. Now, the next thing I wanna go over is how to sign into your email accounts. Now, we talked about um, signing into your Gmail to use the store, but a lot of you have other email types. You have an AOL, you have a Yahoo, you have an iCloud, you have different email types. And so I wanna show you the primary way to sign into an email, and then I wanna show you an, al an uh, alternative way to do it in the event the first way doesn't work for you. So on the home screen, you'll have a folder that says Google. If you tap on that folder, as it expands, you'll see there are a lot more Google apps in the folder. Now tap on the Gmail app. Now one important thing to note is that the Gmail app is not just for Gmails. You can actually sign into other email types with this app. So let's come to the upper right corner, tap on the little icon in the corner, and we're gonna go to add another account. Now your Gmail may not look that way, for many of you, when you open the Gmail app, this should have been the first thing that you saw. And so, again, either way, it doesn't matter as long as you end up on this page. Now, here are your options. You can sign to another Gmail account by tapping here. You can sign to obviously Outlook, Hotmail, or Live here, a Yahoo, or an Office 360 account. If you don't see the email type that you use on the screen, no problem, um, here's what I'll recommend for you. So let's say you have an AOL or an sbcglobal.net. Here's what you wanna do. Tap the home button. We're gonna get out of the Gmail app. We're gonna to go to the Play Store and make sure you're on the Apps tab. And let's, let's make sure we're at the top of the screen here. All I did, so if you notice, when I went to the page, this is what I saw first. I just swiped down to bring up the search bar at the top, tap in the box, tap the number key, and tap the at symbol. All I'm gonna do is type in the at address for my email. What is the at address? If it's an AOL, it's at AOL.com. If it's SBC Global, it's at SBCglobal.net. That's it. So let's tap in, type in AOL.com and hit the magnifying glass in the corner to search. And it's gonna now recommend apps that support that email type. So it's bringing up the AOL app. Guess what? I can hit install. I can download the AOL app and I can now use that app to check my AOL emails. Now if I tap in the box here and we type in sbcglobal.net and hit our magnifying glass, it's now gonna recommend apps for that. So 
guess what? I can use the Yahoo app for it. I can also use Fast and Secure Mail, My at and All these apps will work with that email type. So then I would type, type the green, tap the green install button to begin downloading it. Now, if we hit our home button, swipe up, give it a few seconds, we'll see our AOL app and our Yahoo app are gonna show up now in our app section. And if you don't see it, you'll just need to swipe up and it might show more uh, um, apps at the bottom. So essentially you just need to download an app that will work with those email types. So that's it. So we've gone over navigating the screen, we've gone over email, we've gone over downloading applications. At this point, uh, those are the main things you'll need to know to get started using your tablet. Now, uh, a few more things you may wanna know uh, I'm gonna uh, just show you a few more tips before ending the video that I think will be helpful in you using this tablet. So let's hit our home button. Let's say you don't want this app to be on the home screen. All you have to do is hold down on the icon, or excuse me, hold down the icon, keep your finger on the button, and you drag it up all the way to where it says remove. So that will take it off of the home screen. Okay, so now that we've removed them from the screen, the next step is how do we uninstall them? Well, okay, one important thing to note is that you cannot delete or uninstall all apps on the tablet. Some of the apps are Google apps and they cannot be removed. So let me show you an app that can be uninstalled so you can see the process. And then I'll show you how to identify an app that cannot be removed. So let's swipe up here. Let's say I wanna delete my uh, Amazon Prime Video app that I just installed. I'm gonna hold down on it, and I'm gonna drag up, and you'll notice at the top of the screen, now I have an uninstall button at the top right here. If I drag it right here, it's gonna now uninstall slash delete that app from the tablet. So it's totally gone. But if I try to uninstall the Meet app, which is a Google app, when I hold down it and drag up, it doesn't have the uninstall button at the top. So that's how you know I cannot delete the Google Meet app. So usually Google apps cannot be deleted, but you can delete apps that you have downloaded yourself. So that's an important thing to note there. Now, another uh, important tip is a lot of you wanna have multiple pages on the home screen. So right now we just have this one page. This is the home page. I can hold down on any one of these icons and drag to the right and it will create a new page. You just have to drag literally all the way to the edge of the screen and then it will create a new page. So that's how you create an extra page on the home screen. Now, the last thing I'm gonna go over is how do you change the picture on the, the, the background? Maybe you wanna have a picture of a family member or, or a picture that you've recently taken, you wanna make that the background picture. Hold down on the home screen and this pop-up will come up and you'll tap on wallpapers and then it'll give you the option to go to Google Photos or to the wallpaper app. Now, if you want to make a picture you have saved on the tablet, if you wanna make that the background, you would tap on photos. If you wanna just look at other wallpapers that are available, you tap on wallpapers. So let's tap on wallpapers, hit just once. And now I can look through, there is a uh, list of other wallpaper options you can pick from that are already installed on the tablet. Oh, that one's really nice, that was my favorite. So I can go through, pick any one of these. I think I'll pick this one. And then in the upper left corner, it says set wallpaper. Tap on set wallpaper. You can have it be the background for your home screen and the lock screen or just the home screen. I'm gonna do just the home screen for now. And now that is our new background for the tablet. So now next, I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick picture. I'm gonna tap on the camera icon. And let's just take a picture. Okay, now let's try the same process again, but let's make the picture we just took the background picture. We're gonna hold down the home screen, 
tap on wallpapers, tap on photos, and tap on camera. And then I'm gonna tap on the picture I just took. And then in the left corner, set wallpaper, home screen. And then that's it. Now the picture we just took is now our background. So that's how you take a picture and then make that the background for the tablet. I hope the video was helpful. If it was helpful, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Please make sure you hit that like button and also make sure you subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.